Hey everybody, Gizmo here. I uh, appreciate you joining in. Hey, now what's going on with that? Okay. Uh, we are, hopefully this is going to work here. Uh, welcome to the stream. I got my libation. Hopefully you've got your own. Uh, let's get, I'm welcome with Pikachu. Sorry about that. Um, uh, hope all's going well for you. Uh, tonight we are doing um, a, um, what do you call it, a, a version of... Um, uh, Fallout front of uh, sorry of way back Wednesday, but tonight we're doing Wolfenstein 3d Which was kind of the first first-person shooter that existed um, uh, Way back in uh, 92 93 when this came out uh, It was actually done as a shareware game and uh, the idea was that you would uh, be able to download from a BBS a bulletin board system um, a version of the game you could then play it um, it had the first couple of episodes on it, the first couple of levels. If you liked the game, you could then send money to the developer, id Software, and then they would send you the other episodes. Um, this worked actually for quite a few games uh, that were popular at the time. Uh, Shareware was really a popular um, model for doing all this stuff. Uh, but um, it was definitely fun from a, um, a sort of exposing people to new ideas. Now, the thing about Wolfenstein that is kind of, you know, just out there is there's a few things. Number one, um, it was really a, 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 the, almost the first first-person shooter, um, at least in terms of how we think about them today. The fast pace, the action, all that stuff um, really came out of uh, Wolfenstein. The second thing is that it was really designed around um, the... Um, what do you call it? Uh, all the blood and gore. Um, so a lot of the things that we see in the game are things that at the time were pretty um, uh, graphic. Um, and I, I don't mean that in a punny way. I mean that, that there, were, there was a lot of, um, there's a lot of interesting things about this. Um, another game would sort of take the, the mantle of sort of the most, uh, what's supposed to word I'm looking at, distasteful. Um, when there's a game that came called Postal that came out um, a few years later. Um, in much the same way that we have a lot of school shootings today, back in the 90s and even the late 80s, we had a lot of post office shootings. So people would go postal. And so there was a game called Postal where your job was to go around shooting people and killing people. Um, it was considered pretty uh, distasteful and tasteless, uh, kind of tacky, um, and sort of um, you know uh, making fun of and minimizing um, the challenges that we were that we were seeing from people who were going through those uh, crises. Regardless, um, Wolfenstein sort of started the trend um, by making it about you know let's kill people but let's make it gory. Um, but their protagonist were were what was the Nazis, um, and of course we like killing Nazis. You know we're still doing that today. We have had several Call of Duty episodes or several Call of Duty um, uh, uh, systems that were based uh, in World War II, where your job was to uh, you know, was to kill Nazis. Um, and now, of course, the most recent one, Call of Duty World War II, is all about killing Nazis. Um, so anyway. Um, uh, Wolfenstein sort of started that off. Um, something interesting about Wolfenstein as well was um, both Carmack and uh, Romero, who are the sort of the two real heads behind um, id, um, Adrian Carmack was also there, um, and Jay Wilbur, but primarily it was uh, John Romero and um, John Carmack. They were sort of the, the, the creative force, I would say, maybe behind um, behind its software. Tom Hall, of course, was also there doing a lot of the game design, the level level design and stuff. But um, uh, they wanted to use Wolfenstein as the basis because they both had enjoyed playing the original Castle Wolfenstein, which was a not a side scroller, but it was, it was kind of a side scroller. It was uh, you know individual screens where you would run around and shoot people and. And try to run around, and you have to sort of escape the next level, that kind of stuff. Um, but it was all 2D, that kind of stuff. And so they wanted to use the name, and they found out um, after contacting the original developer that um, through a series of uh, misfortunes, the entire intellectual property for Wolfenstein had pretty much lapsed. So they were welcome to use Wolfenstein um, as the title. So they did, and they called it Wolfenstein 3D. So um, anyway, let me just go ahead and go over here real quick and make sure that I've got everything working. Um, 
I'm having a problem with this guy. He's just not showing up. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but uh, hopefully this will all work here. Okay, and Alt Enter. Let's see if that guy comes up now. Yes, there we go. Awesome. Okay. Dost thou wish to leave with such hasty abandon? No, actually, I don't. Okay. So anyway, um, the other thing we're going to do here, which is kind of funny, is um, uh, almost all of these games that, and this is especially funny, is we sort of started off with, can I play daddy? Um, all the way through, don't hurt me, to bring him on, and I am death incarnate. Um, we uh, sort of saw some of the other games with nightmare mode, that kind of stuff. Um, some of the other games, as they get the sort of to increase the uh, difficulty level, uh, they made it more interesting. But we're gonna play Bring 'Em On. Um, you know, I haven't played in 25 years, so this should be fun. Um, and I'm hopeful that I can get this. I actually used to remap uh, my keys from WASD to ED ESDF, um, and so I've got to kind of make sure that I've got this. Um, Okay, there we go. Alright, so that's that. Alright, so we've killed our guard. Come on, guard. What's going on here? Why are you not why are you not coming? So there's some food. Why? What? Oh. Okay, it's making me use the those commands. I don't want to use those commands. Yes. Got some ammo. Good. Um, the other thing that um, they did with this game, that Carmack did with this game, was um, they added in these secret rooms and stuff, and I don't recall what they all are. So we're going to have to kind of spend some time trying to see if we can find them. Um, but uh, they are kind of, kind of funny, so, all right. Oh, look, it's a pile of bones. Okay. Ooh, we need, we need ammo. Let's get some ammo, thank you. Now you had to be careful, you couldn't just simply uh, jump in and, um, what do you call it, uh, ooh, I don't think we want to go that way quite yet. This way? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Health's still at 100%, so we're not over. Um, but you couldn't, um, you had to come at them sort of almost uh, straight on in order to, to, to open them up. So you wanted to make sure you didn't just simply, um, uh, you know, you could come at them obliquely and have it work. Uh, but most of it actually was, um, what do you call it, most of the secret rooms and stuff um, were later on in the game after you hit the um, more of the Nazi stuff. And then again, interestingly, um, the game was actually uh, banned in Germany, um, mostly because it, um, let's see, look, it's Hitler. Um, mostly because of the Nazi imagery, um, the the not the imagery at the time, you were actually um, um, I had to almost say verboten. It was uh, the, um, the the a lot of the Nazi stuff was um, uh, not allowed in Germany at the time, so they um, um, uh, banned the game for that reason. The good thing is you don't have to worry about like reloading and stuff, so that's kind of nice. Alright, let's this one. Okay. Um, let's see, look, there's a secret, there's a secret space. What do we find? What do we find? <gasps> Ooh, lots of stuff. Ooh, and a better gun. Oh, yeah. I've got the machine gun. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, let's go back and get some food, though. 
Put our health back up here while we're at it. Since we're here, we may as well, right? There we go. Level 95, and I actually one more. There's one in here. There we go, 100%. Alrighty. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the one of the things, what I'll say is that, um, you know, at the time, um, and the reason that this is kind of such an important thing is because this game was um, such a um, departure from what we were used to. The only real first-person style games that were like this that we were that we had access to at the time were th uh, space sims. So like Wing Commander that we were playing on previous um, way back when space. Oh yeah. Oh come on. Right. Let's say he has ammo. I want to get his ammo. Nazi treasures. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, but uh, yeah, the nice thing about uh, Wolfenstein was that it was, um, like I said, such um, a departure and it was so good at what it had done um, compared to what other games were have been doing at the time. Um, it really did um, push boundaries in a way that um, other games simply hadn't. Always anything behind here because there's just a lot of space. Okay, and we got it. Alright, I think we're good. Alright, ooh, we are low on health. Let's go get health. Let's go get health. Oh, I already did that one. That's the treasures. Okay, let's go back this way. Well, we know there's food back here. Let's go back. We'll go back. This way. Uh, also, something that was kind of interesting that they did was they had this whole um, um, uh, portrait thing at the bottom. You can see here that they have, like, you know, uh, B.J. Blaskowitz um, has, um, what do you call it? Um, um, he has uh, some damage, and as he gets more damaged over time, um, he... Um, uh, has he looks worse and worse and worse uh, they would keep that up throughout a lot of their other games as well so all right here we are well, although I've only got 43% health it's not good so we got Doggers. I don't want to kill the doggers, but well, we kind of have to kill the doggers. We don't have a choice in the matter. You don't kill the doggers, the doggers kill you. So. There's no secrets. I don't see any there. Ooh, lots of food. Yes, food. Food is our friend. 61, 71. Nice. Yeah, I don't recall there being anything in these guys. Does mean a whole lot. Again, 25 years later, what do you expect, right?
those uh, wells look like the ones from Zine, which is kind of funny, so I'm just going to kind of have to chuckle. Uh, they don't look overly uh, dissimilar from the ones I've seen in other games. Okay. We're going to check this wall, but we'll just check it again, because it needs to be checked again. Alright, and we're back to here. Okay, off we go. There's that dead dude. And at the end of the level, it would tell you, here's how you did. Here's how many secrets you found. Here's how many, you know, so all that stuff. So it would kind of give you a heads up of, hey, look, you know, you're, you're doing pretty well. Or, no, you're not. You, you kind of need to work on it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Get some stuff. The other thing that they did, which was kind of fun, was that sometimes they would put additional um, uh, secret rooms inside secret rooms, which was kind of like, you can do that? <laughs> so um, it was kind of humorous sometimes when you, like, suddenly you find out, you're like, oh, wait a second, that's, um, there's a secret room inside a secret room there. Okay. The one problem, of course, is that it's not very uh, responsive. So, you know, there's not a lot of, like, you know, rush into the room, check your corners, that kind of stuff. It's very much, uh, you, you know, run in and then you might have a chance to actually do something, but you gotta take some time. Um, Alright, I think we're good. I don't think there's anything in here. Doesn't appear to be. Alright, we gotta go to this door or the other door. Let's go to this door. All right, that's an exit, it looks like. Ooh. Nice. Oh, wow, hmm, okay. Just a little fast down this hallway. Actually, open up any. Okay, got him. Ooh, look. Some more stuff. Yep. Awesome. This way. Oh, I, that's right. I wanted to check these walls though first before we go too far. This is an exit over there. Okay. I didn't suspect there would be anything there, but you never know. Okay. We're all good. Let's double check it. Yep. that we're escaping from Castle of Wolfenstein. There we go. Secret, we only have found 40% of the secrets. We pretty much hit every wall, so we only got 91% of the treasure, so. Um, so cheers, yay. Um, but that's kind of what, um, that's kind of what Wolfenstein's like. So we just do a, a lot more of that kind of gaming.
Well, that was faster than I expected. Back with the yeah, I have to figure out where all the all the um, hidden stuff is because there's obviously a lot. There obviously is hidden stuff in here, so um, we missed. Um, about 40% of the hidden stuff, so we'll have to go back and do that eventually, but that's okay. It was kind of, kind of fun, so. Right. Oh! Bite me. right there. Absolutely got that food, thank you. Grab his hand off, thank you. It's food there, but I don't need it, but got it. Alright, there's more food there we can't grab because we're full. Now, there's probably some secrets in some of these rooms. I'm just not going to bother. I'm just trying to kind of get you guys a little bit of the feel of the game here before we get too far into it. So those are the SS guys, and they are pretty nasty, actually. Um, they uh, they have submachine guns, and um, they they hurt a lot when they hit you. Wow, as long as it's shot. That's the room. This is the stuff we're going through. Yep, that's what we're going through. Okay. okay. Alright. I 
Hey, here's some big players. Oh yeah, and apparently all the sound effects were actually done by the guys um, at the at the company, so they did them all, um, which is kind of silly. But uh, it, I guess it kept the production costs low. I will go through and see if I can find out where some of these uh, other hidden uh, doors and stuff are because they're kind of fun. Oh, there's more ammo over here. Well, I like ammo. Ammo is my friend. Alright. Okay. Well, I think we're good here. Let's, um, let's keep going this way. Alright. Treasure, 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 treasure. Oh yeah, and some dog food. You know I mean. Yeah, so getting the right angle um, so that you could open up the secret doors while still moving along the edges and stuff was kind of a skill you could develop. Um, and I was okay at it, but I was never that good. So, um, you also see, I mean, all these things are just sprites. They're not actually um, real um, um, drawings. Of them. Just they're, oops, I did not want to do that. Um, they're just, um, oh, I think we're back at the beginning here. Hold on. Um, they're, uh, they're not really so much uh, textures as they are. Um, uh, the, 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 the guys aren't models, rather. What they are is just they're simply... Um, sprites that we are using. Aha! See, look, that worked. Okay. Got the right angle that time. Alright, here we are. And we died. So that's kind of just to give you a just a kind of a feel for what Wolfenstein is like. Um, uh, we'll play some more later on, um, but I do want to just kind of make this a, a little bit of a quick video this evening, mostly just to give you guys an idea of kind of what Wolfenstein was like. Um, I'll play some some more, kind of get some deeper into the levels and stuff. But you can see how the gameplay works. Um, I'll try to find some more of the um, locations of that stuff, but. Um, Imagine playing this for the first time and, and looking at this and going, oh my god, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Um, I mean, the, the your guy getting beaten up as he takes more damage, your the different levels of from can I play daddy all the way down to I am death incarnate. Um, all of this stuff was relatively new. Um, and the fact that it was free, the first levels of this game were free so that we could play them and, and stuff. Um, after this, you've got, of course, Doom and then Quake, 
and it really sort of takes off from there and the FPS, especially with its software sort of leading the way um, in the, the engine development and all those things, I think was something that was really pretty impressive. Um, and um, was, you know, this is, you know, looking at it now, you're kind of like, oh my God, this is just kind of cheesy and stuff. But at the same time, this was really cutting edge and very um, uh, strongly pushing boundaries and trying things that we had never tried before. So um, anyway, want to thank you guys for watching along. Um, like I said, just a quick, just a quick one tonight for way back Wednesday, maybe tomorrow, um, but yeah, way back Wednesday, but on a Thursday. So maybe tomorrow for first person shooter Friday, we'll do more Wolfenstein. Um, or maybe we'll play some Doom and, or some Quake. Um, uh, like I said, you know, some of the things that came around, especially with Doom, um, there's just some of the things that they did there um, really, really push boundaries and really set it up. And especially the uh, once they open up to multiplayer, um, that really did sort of ele elevate the gameplay to a whole new level. Um, up until that point with Wing Commander and with everything else, I mean, all the things that you could do is it was a single player game. Suddenly with Doom, you had the possibility of having multiplayer. And then as you got into Doom 2 and as you got into Quake 2, suddenly, you know, it was, I can have bots join my game and I can play and I can get better as a player against bots in the game. Suddenly it became a very different experience. Um, and um, being able to, you know, play against other people, um, you know, I remember, you know, we were doing, um, I think it was Doom and Quake. We had a whole, um, uh, the, the, the office that I was working in, we would play at five o'clock. We would kick off, um, you know, a Doom server and we'd all play. And then um, we would have it set up, set up so that you would have, um, so I, I captured all the information about who, who had how many kills and deaths and stuff. And I kept all of a track track of it in a, in a Lotus 123 worksheet. Um, and then eventually an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then I would post up the stats on my outside my cube every, every night after the game, I would, you know, pull it together and stuff. Um, eventually it got to where we had, um, you know, you could capture the logs and you could scrape the logs and automatically degenerate these things with scripting and all that stuff. But um, up until that point, this was all, I mean, this all had to be done by, by hand. Um, and it was pretty amazing, pretty amazing stuff. Um, pretty heady at the time. So anyway, um, I, I do appreciate you guys coming along. Hope you had some fun uh, seeing something really old school like this. Um, we do have, uh, I do have other versions. I've got uh, Return to Wolfenstein and I've got uh, Wolfenstein Spear of Destiny, which was actually the follow on to Wolfenstein 3D. Um, so maybe we'll play that and you can kind of see how the game has evolved a little bit. Again, we'll try Doom, we'll try Quake, so you can sort of see the progression of the games as, as time goes on. Um, the funny thing is that when we get to um, Quake 2 is when we actually get to introduce the concept of um, uh, vertical. Um, up until this point, you'll notice I never had to move the camera up or down in order to shoot somebody. It was always just a, on a single plane. And that was really the, the, the main benefit of, the, of a game like Wolfenstein all the way up through um, Quake was that all the games were, um, you could play it with a keyboard. You didn't have to have a joystick. You didn't have to use a mouse. You didn't have to use anything. You just, just play it with the keyboard and you were done. Um, when Quake 2 came around, was when we finally had to start using it. And I actually, um, at the time, um, I was playing on keyboard only and I was doing very well keyboard only. I was the top player in my, in my uh, group of friends and I had to change over. I was getting my ass handed to me on a regular basis by people who were playing using a keyboard and mouse. And so I had to completely change my gameplay from keyboard only to keyboard and mouse um, when Quake 2 came out so that I had a chance because you can't aim a railgun with the keyboard. It's just, it's, you're like using this and you got to go, you know, uh, uh, less than and greater than or to line up your shot and then hit control to fire. At that point, the guy's moved. You know, if you can just simply point and click, I mean, it's a whole different experience. So uh, as the games developed, our gameplay had to develop, our, our how we were interacting with the games had to, had to change. Um, but all these early games, it was all single plane. You didn't have to worry about it. All you do is sort of line up the shots a little bit and you were, and you were good to go. So, um, 
kind of fun. Um, we'll, uh, like I said, we'll see how things uh, play out for uh, for Wolfenstein. We'll play some more uh, tomorrow for F FPS Friday. Will it be a sort of a blend of way back and first person Friday? And um, anyway, thanks for coming along. Pikachu and I are really happy you came. Uh, cheers. And if you, like I said, if you're on uh, if you're on Twitch or on uh, Mixer, please follow. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. If there's anything that you want to see, especially um, if you really want to watch a particular game or you have questions about something, just uh, go to my YouTube channel, leave a comment, um, and I will absolutely get back to you on that stuff. Um, would love to share some of the stuff that I know about some of these older games with you guys. Um, some of the stuff is, you know, without sort of that cultural tribal knowledge, um, we're going to lose some of the information that we have about this stuff. Wikipedia is only as good as the people who know about it, right? If you're, if you're contributing to it, you have to know something about it in order to do that. So, uh, anyway, thanks for playing along and hope you had a really good time. And until next time, um, we will see you later, but cheers and um, uh, have a great one. See ya. Bye.